Mukobe, habari yako? Deputy President William Ruto has said Kenya must create safe spaces for girls and women to realize their potential, thrive and accelerate gender parity. He added that the end FGM Builds initiative is a key intervention that will empower pastorist women by promoting the sale of bead products, increase awareness against these retrogressive practices and foster sustainable development. Gender inequality continues to undermine the social development of humanity and every step must be assembled and put in place to make sure that we have gender parity and progressively work towards gender equality. This is one step in that direction. This morning we are signing this ceremony that creates a movement that is called End FGM Beats Initiative, which is going to bring together the Anti-FGM Board, the Ushanga Initiative, UNFPA, the Government of Kenya, in prosecuting the Anti-FGM campaign using cultural practices like bidding that is going on in communities that participate or that continue the retrogressive FGM practices. It is all clear to the government of Kenya that FGM or female genital mutilation and early marriages undermine and create problems of health for our girls and women, problems with their education, and problems with their socio-economic <coughs> development. And therefore, we must assemble every arsenal to fight FGM in our country. FGM and early child marriages undermine the health, the education, and the socio-economic development of our girls and women. And in fact, FGM, simply put, is violence against women. And we must stop it by all means. And uh, every avenue must be used and as government of Kenya, we will explore every opportunity, work with all our partners, work with all the agencies to prosecute the movement against FGM and early child marriages. And therefore, this morning, we are flagging off this initiative and I want to thank UNFPA, Ecobank and all the partnering government agencies in assembling this team and this initiative, ending FGM using our culture of working with beats with our women uh, across the pastoral communities in Kenya. It is the position of the government of Kenya that we must work progressively and deliberately to end inequality in our country. FGM reduces and undermines the esteem of our girls and women, undermines their health and progress, and encourages inequality in our society. And by all means, we must stand shoulder to shoulder to make sure that we deal firmly, decisively, with this challenge to our society. And we expect all government agencies, including the provincial administration, including all other government agencies, to support the anti-FGM campaign in our country so that we can free our girls and women from the shackles of these bad cultural 
retrogressive practices. And I know the potential of girls and women because I have them in my house. And I know the kind of loss this country undergoes when our girls carry other babies or children are carrying other children because of early child marriages. The kind of loss we incur as a country and the kind of potential that we lose from our women. And therefore, all of us as parents, as leaders, as members of this society, as Kenyans, we must come together and work towards eliminating uh, early child marriages and, F and FGM and support this grand initiative. In Kenya, up to 23% of women continue to undergo FGM, a very retrogressive um, process. And therefore, 23% of our women is way too many. And that is why the anti-FGM board under the leadership of Madam Pareyo and the Ushanga initiative under the leadership of Madam Gaiseri have come together with UNFPA to up the game against FGM in Kenya. And this ceremony and this signing ceremony today that helps commercialize the cultural activity around beads in the fight against FGM to ensure that those who engage in this practice have alternative progressive engagements that will make them do uh, positive commercial initiatives <coughs> that will empower them financially, provide money for them to take their kids to school, and meaningfully and commercially engage those who would otherwise be engaging in FGM and organize them into cooperatives, organize them into commercially viable entities and create the environment for them to be able to take their children instead to school and for girls and our women to be engaged positively in matters to do with their socio-economic development. The United Nations Population Fund is indeed very grateful to have the opportunity to have the leadership of His Excellency, the Deputy President, for this partnership. Female genital mutilation, as we all know it, represents a pernicious violation of rights of women and girls. It's indeed one of those practices that have been persistent over the years and continue to have significant negative health and development consequences for women and girls, but for the larger society as a whole. And working with the government of Kenya, with the visionary leadership that has been provided and with structures which are already in place, the United Nations Population Fund is very pleased to be able to go into a partnership with the Shanga Initiative and the anti-FGM board to exploit the medium of the culturally accepted bids to end FGM. These are bids which are culturally accepted within the communities and which we intend to brand and support with a robust program in partnership with EcoBank, given their large footprint on the continent with regards to the banking sector, to ensure that this initiative is not only commercially viable but programmatically sound. That at the end of the day, we can trail and provide resources to communities, but directly to women and girls to ensure that we can motivate them not only to abandon this practice, but also to abandon child marriage, to increase enrollment of girls in school, to increase nutrition outcomes, and also have a positive feedback and impact on even the universal health coverage that His Excellency the President seeks to achieve. And so for us, a sustainable way of doing it is to build on existing initiatives that government has put in place. So we look forward to this partnership. We look forward to the leadership of His Excellency, the Deputy President. And as we work towards hosting the International Conference of Population and Development 25 years after, in November, which is being co-hosted by the government of Kenya, the government of Denmark, and the United Nations Population Fund, this initiative 
will be a good practice that we can showcase and we can trail and we can celebrate. Excellency, Deputy President, thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. We at the FDM uh, board are extremely happy because of this great day where we see uh, us coming together with the Wishanga initiative and signing an agreement so that in all their art or which, whatever they will do will carry the messages of F and FGM programs. This is going to be an added value to the women because we will not only be going to these women talking to them and leaving them like that. These women will have hope of having something else, of even making them stronger economically, because they will sell the beads. We will also consider the women who, are, who, who come from areas that practice female genital mutilation and don't use uh, beadwork. We are still, with UNFPA, we are looking for what they can do best so that they can also put some, something small in their pockets. So this is a great day for us, and we say thank you, and we look forward to our deputy president, because we look forward, we know your mouth, your added voice will make a change and a difference in the lives of women. Because female genital mutilation is a retrogressive culture that has been there and it oppresses women. When you look at uh, communities that practice female genital mutilation, they don't give uh, girls a privilege to go to school. These girls drop from school, they are married early, they start bearing children at an early age, and when you look at them, uh, economically, it will not have uh, help our country. And for that reason, I say thank you for receiving us, and thank you once again UNFPA, all our supporters, I want to say thank you, and I will look forward to us uh, working with these women so that they can end female genital mutilation. Thank you. It's an exciting uh, opportunity in that most of the women from these seven counties that we represent, they also carry and bear the face of communities that are struggling to eradicate uh, FGM. And again, we will be de talking to them in a language that they understand, that is through the beats, and giving them an opportunity to improve their economic base but more so put a word and stand firm to say that they will stand against FGM. So that is what we are doing here today and we are so excited. We as Wishanga Kenya Initiative, we are excited to roll off the program and we pray that this uh, bracelet will be worn all over the world. Anyone who is with us, who will walk with us, to be able to uh, support, to eradicate FGM, would put it on with a lot of pride and to know that it is the women who bear the face and are trying to come out of the face of FGM that are making it. We'll brand it in a way that you'll be able to know where the women are coming from using the branding of Ushanga Kenya Initiative. And with, because of the support that we've gotten from the Office of the Deputy President and the Presidency as a whole. We are so excited and energized every time to move forward and looking forward that other initiatives like this one would come up, particularly through the government and other private uh, partnerships, where we can address issues of uh, underdevelopment, issues of uh, marginalization, using a language that these communities understand. And one language that they understand is their cultural belief and ties of Ushanga. The Ushanga that they wear it so bravely and so they wear it with a lot of pride and we think that it will speak volumes for them. Indeed today is a celebration and a beautiful one at that because it's a day where we join efforts together with the UNFPA and the Ecobank to work towards ending FGM through the bead, the bead being a symbol of identity, the being being a symbol of pride to communities that unfortunately also practice FGM. And therefore, as we come together in this initiative to profile the bead as a symbol and a tool that transforms these communities from being FGM ridden 
to being empowered um, uh, empowerment centers and empowerment, uh, centers of empowerment. And on behalf of the state departments that are part of this process, the state department for culture, because the FGM is a cultural practice, the state department for cooperatives that has brought together the women leaders into formal entities, the state department for tourism that has uh, where Ushanga Initiative is housed and which is responsible for marketing, and the state department for gender, which indeed is uh, charged with the uh, addressing the challenges of gender inequality and the women empowerment, we are truly proud to be associated with this program and we indeed are uh, fortunate that uh, we are getting the highest support from the highest office of the land towards ending FGM using the bid as an initiative of empowerment, as an initiative of pride and an initiative of cultural uh, relevance. So I thank everybody and I congratulate um, the FGM board, the UNFPA and the Shanghai Initiative for coming uh, together to work in tandem uh, towards addressing FGM using the bead as a symbol of identity.